Hello everybody, Jake here for FM Scout. I hope you've all had a great Christmas period and are excited to be done with 2020 and head into the new year. But as we are still in the holiday season, we thought for today's video we could get a little bit sentimental and think about football managers or championship manager games of the past and look at some of the heroes and icons of those old games. Now obviously there's been a lot of these games and therefore there's quite a lot of these legends too. So if you do enjoy today's video, let us know in the comments and we will look at making a part two with some of the players that we've missed out. It's not as much we've missed them out, they're just gonna be in late videos because today we are starting with the early championship manager years of championship manager 20304 that kind of time so we're going to be taking a look at 10 players their profiles from the old games what they ended up doing with their careers players who are similar to them nowadays and i think you guys should try and see how many of these 10 that you recognize and let us know in the comment what score you get out of 10 now obviously if you've watched any of my videos on my channel the link to that will be in the description we're getting close to 800 subscribers so if we could get as close to that as possible by the end of the year then that will be absolutely amazing or if you've seen my videos on fm scout you'll know i'm on the younger side and if i was to play of these games I would have been very very young so I'm not gonna lie I didn't know all of these players but a good friend one of the brains behind FM Scout has helped me out giving me some of his picks and some of the descriptions of how they used to be on the game. So with that being said, before we get started, if you do enjoy today's video and want to see more like this, hit the like button. It always helps us out pushing these videos out to more people. Comment down below who you'd like to see in future episodes and your score out of 10. And if you haven't already, then hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 103,000 subscribers now. That's the next target. We're going to slowly keep pushing up. And also, if you really want to be nice, then hit that notification bell to be notified when we upload. Hopefully the videos that we make on this channel, usually around 10 or 20 minutes worth of videos a day, will keep you you guys entertained and at least be able to occupy you for a little bit of your day make sure you watch the full video because there is one player in this list that is absolutely insane and the story behind why he is so good is even funnier so make sure you wait to check that out so without further ado we should get into the first player on this list no messing around and that is Ibrahim Bakayoko so if I've done this right you should be able to see his profile on the screen right now and my word what a player this is if this was in nowadays football manager he'd probably be the best wonder kid on the game he is absolutely insane back in the day of championship manager 97 slash 98 this guy was a prolific striker he was skillful pacey he had an influence rating of 22 which is just incredible we don't use that attribute in football manager anymore but we can see he has a huge influence on the way games go if he's on your pitch you've got a massively increased chance of winning not only was this guy fast and influential he could dribble he could shoot and in terms of strikers, you cannot ask for more than this guy. In all honesty, if he was in this game, he wouldn't just be probably one of the best wonder kids. At the age of 20 here, he's probably just as good as some of the best players in the game at their peak. If I was to compare him to anyone on Football Manager, he just gives me Ronaldo vibes, just a high influence, high pace, high shooting. Now, a lot of these comparisons are going to be very vague. I know he's not exact a copy of Ronaldo. Ronaldo is better at heading, for example, but just in general comparisons, he'd be at that level. Absolutely insane. And the fact that he's only 20 here is incredible. So what did he do in real life? Well, after leaving the Ivory Coast, he headed over to France to play for Montpellier. He then moved to Everton in the Premier League. And if rumours are to be believed, Everton actually used a championship manager database to have a look at this guy. Saw he was so good and just signed him. But if they'd actually sent a real scout to this guy, they probably could have saved themselves some money because he didn't have a very good year in Merseyside and was quickly shipped off and ended up playing in countries around the world, such as Spain, Greece, and then finally finished in France in the really low divisions. I think the fifth division at the time with starred Bordelais. Now whilst he didn't hit the heights that he did in Football Manager, he didn't have a bad career, but I think he'll always be best remembered by Championship Manager players as just one of the best strikers you could ever buy. The next player we're looking at is Kennedy Bakir Sioglu. This guy was one of the series first icons playing for Hammerby in the Swedish leagues and the Swedish international was good for a number of the Championship Manager games but peaked particularly in Championship Manager 3. He was affordable for most clubs and once you'd sign him you'd have a midfielder who could easily take you onto big things, even the Champions League, if you used him right. His high technical attributes and technique across the three attacking midfield positions remind me a bit of Dybala, the kind of player you'd be getting. And again, these comparisons are a bit iffy, but it's the closest I could find to him. But this guy just looks incredible, considering how cheap you could pick him up. You'd basically be set in midfield, and this guy could carry your team forward for years and years. So what did this guy do with his career? Well, unlike some of the absolute failures on this list, this guy had a pretty good career. He had a few spells in Holland, playing for 20 and Ajax. And he only retired a few years ago in 2018 and hit the headlines then where in his final season he scored a spectacular free kick in a 3-0 win against IFK Gothenburg and went on to celebrate by getting the cup of beer out of a stanza. I don't know if any of you ever saw that video but he celebrated by basically having a swig of beer from a cup that a fan gave to him and he went viral all over social media and basically cemented himself as a cult icon throughout football and in championship manager. Now the next player we're looking at is Tommy Svindal Larsson. Now in the late 90s English football 
football had kind of gotten onto the idea that there were some cheap bargains to be had in the Scandinavian regions and this guy was a bargain hunter's dream and that was no different in Championship Manager 97-98 where Larsen was playing for Norwegian Minnows Steibeck. I've probably pronounced that wrong. Such Minnows, in fact, that I can't even find them when searching in Football Manager. But this guy's stats, if you look at them on the screen, are absolutely amazing. Like, I've never seen anything like it. This guy is a proper warrior and could probably compete in the middle with the likes of Zidane, Varon, Rivaldo. He just absolutely knock them out of the park. Because not only was this central midfielder really technical, but he was big, he was strong, with 19 strength as you can see there, and he will just absolutely maraud through you. He reminds me a bit of Pete Chiaia Torre at Manchester City when he was just absolutely unbeatable. Not only would he dominate the midfield, he was technical with it too. He could score goals, he could assist. And if we're looking at a current football manager player, then he kind of reminds me of Milinkovic Savic, where his size and strength don't determine his technical attributes because he has them too. Now unfortunately Larson wasn't as good as Championship Manager said he was. He spent most of his career in Norway, which is obviously fair enough, and spent a few years at Nuremberg too in Germany. He holds the Norwegian record for the most youth caps of 54 international youth caps and was dubbed God's gift to Norwegian football, but unfortunately that never came to be, although he'll always stay in Championship Manager players' minds as this bargain that you could get and forever dominate your midfield. Now the story behind the next play we're going to look at is my favourite in this whole list, probably my favourite I've ever heard. And honestly, when I found out about this the other day, it just made me Google so much. So Tom Madeira is the guy we're looking at. Now before we talk about him, let's just have a look at his profile. We can see that he's a very good striker, either footed with incredible technique, great set pieces, a huge influence on the game, super fast, super good at dribbling, really good at shooting, agile. He's basically got everything you could ever want and in the game he was this absolute icon. The Portuguese international was, as you can see here, pretty much perfect in every way. You wouldn't want to change him. You could get this guy for dirt cheap from the Portuguese pub leagues and he'd go on to win the Champions League for you, would score a goal a game and was absolutely phenomenal. But there was one slight problem, and that problem was that this guy didn't even exist. Now how did this come to be? Well, if you know anything about Football Manager, they don't have a team of thousands and thousands of people who go to every single team. They basically use like volunteers and trustworthy people who report on the players at a club, report their stats, and that's how they make the database. Well, it turns out that the Championship Manager researcher for that part of Portugal, Antonio Lopez, who, as a side note, was a youth player who hadn't quite made the cut, and when he got the opportunity to put things right that went wrong in his career, he decided to create Tomadeira, breaking two golden rules of Championship Manager researchers, one of which was don't put yourself in the game and the other being if you do do that then don't make yourself the world's best player because you know it's going to be quite obvious if you do and it didn't take long for championship manager to patch him out of the game eventually but his legacy will always live on as just this absolutely incredible world-class striker that you could pick up for pocket change and I mean looking at his stats wow like there, there is no better than this and when I filtered today's football manager database with the stats that we've seen of Tom Madeira the only player that came up was Lionel Messi so that kind of shows you the kind of level that this guy was at and he will forever go down as an icon of championship manager. Now the next player we're looking at is Nigerian journeyman Taribo West. Now if we go back to 2001 which is considered by some to be the golden age of championship manager you'll find that this guy was a free agent and not only that he was a top international footballer one of the best midfielders in the game for free and starting a career and signing Taribo West was almost seen as cheating because of how good he was. You can see here the centre back is strong, he's physical, he wins all of his tackles and he basically just shore up any defence in the world with him coming in at the back. In real life he did do pretty well for himself playing for the likes of Inter and AC Milan and then decided to finish his career in Iran so he definitely had a bit of a journey around the footballing leagues. And he was also unforgettable in the 1998 World Cup for Nigeria because he had these braids that were green and white. I've had a look at a picture of him and it's, yeah, you should go and check it out. It's very cool to look at. You wouldn't be able to mistake him on the pitch. And the only person I could think in the game who reminds me of him is Sergio Ramos just because it's like an absolute ultimate centre-back tank who is physical and gets a job done in defence for you. So he was basically a middle-aged Sergio Ramos for free. What more could you want from this guy? And what a legend Taribo West was. Now the next player we're looking at is England right back Mark Duff. Now he played for Cheltenham Town and was just one of them always reliable right backs. He wouldn't set the world alight, but for how cheap you could pick him up, which was a few hundred thousand pounds, He's absolutely insane looking at him, he's, he's pacey, he works hard up and down the wings, either footed and can defend really well too. Now even though the game had him down as an England international, he actually played 21 times for Northern Ireland in real life. And interestingly, he's one of the very few footballers who's played in the top 8 divisions in England getting Cheltenham promoted up through the leagues and then playing in the Championship and Premier League for Burnley. And if we go back to where it all started, you might notice 
Cheltenham, their manager, Michael Duff. That's Mike Duff. He's now gone on to be a manager for Cheltenham, isn't doing too bad for himself, and we can see he's had a pretty good career in football and now in management too. Now, if I'm honest, I did have a look around and I couldn't find anyone like Mike Duff. The closest I could get was Kimmich just because of how good he was defending and how like versatile he was. But then you've got to think Mike Duff is amazingly quick and can't cross, which are basically the opposites of Kimmich. Kimmich isn't so quick and can cross. So again, it's a very weak comparison, but the only one I could think of, Mike Duff, what an absolute hero and the kind of player we all love, them steady players that forever stay in your team and always perform for you. Now we're going to be looking at Mark Kerr. Now apparently this is someone that everybody used to sign in Championship Manager 0102 from Falkirk for only 800,000, maybe a million pounds. And this guy in central midfield is an absolute bargain and well worth the investment that you put into him. He was just an absolute leader. You can see here he's got 20 determination off the ball and teamwork, 19 work rate, either footed with 18 stamina. He's a football manager player's dream because yeah, you've got all your technical players. Not saying that Mark Kerr isn't technical, but you just sit this guy in the midfield to do all the dirty work for everybody else and lead your team for glory. And believe it or not, he's still playing in real life. We can go over and see the veteran midfielder now. He's still playing for Air United in the Scottish Championship. And by the looks of it, I think he's manager and player. It says they don't have a manager, but when I searched up Mark Kerr, if we look at him here, look, you can see he's actually manager and a central midfielder. So he's doing the full job for Air United now in the Scottish Championship. And his career has gone through the likes of Dundee United and Aberdeen. And in terms of players I could compare him to, I literally couldn't think of anyone, so there's no comparison for Mark Kerr. He's up there, out on his own, as just his absolute midfield weapon that would do anything for his team and anything to make his team win. Now, the next player we're looking at is Ghanaian slash Swedish international Tom Tom Zola Mukuku, who definitely holds the award for the best name in football manager and probably football history. I'm just going to call him Tom Tom for now, and I'm not talking about them little things from Star Wars that they ride on half. But this guy who started in the youth teams of Derby County, available for around £500,000, would go on to settle into pretty much any team's first team straight away and become one of the best players to sign in the Championship Manager 0102 years. This guy was really good at dribbling and insanely quick and would basically always slot in behind your two strikers. That was usually his best position. And just purely for how cheap he was, he was a must-buy in Championship Manager. Now, how did his career go in the real world? Well, he did start in Sweden, but like we know, he did end up playing for Derby. And unfortunately, while he was in England, his brother did pass away, which Makuku actually blames his poor career on because he couldn't like get over the fact that his brother died. He ended up going on to play in Norway and Sweden before starting his own club in 2013, Congo United FC. And considering while he was at Derby at 16 years old, this guy looked like he had the world at his feet. It's very sad to see that he didn't go on to fulfil his potential. But at least he was a legend in Football Manager and interestingly he actually has a room named after him at the head office of Sports Interactive who are the guys that make Football Manager. Again I did go and run his attributes through the current Football Manager database and I found the most similar player to him who I haven't mentioned already was Griezmann. Again probably a very poor comparison but you can see what I'm going for playing in behind the strikers or either side of them and sometimes even up front with just really nice technical stats and dribbling stats. Now we're going to be looking at Icelandic international Andre Sigporsson Again, I'm not Icelandic, I've definitely pronounced that wrong. But nowadays, Iceland is becoming a more prominent football nation, but back in the day, it was basically Eidegger Johnson and that was it. Which is why when this player appeared in Championship Manager from KR Reykjavik, it was so exciting because this guy was known for his ice-cold finishing. He could be brought for dirt cheap and he actually had a maximum potential of 200 in the database in the game, which meant that he was actually better than Messi. He didn't have a bad career, he didn't have a great career either, he did get a dream move very early on to FC Bayern, maybe they looked at him in Championship Manager, who knows. But yeah, he went to Bayern, played for their second team a bit and then eventually went back to Iceland, scored 35 goals in 48 appearances which got him hate moved to Molde. He got 7 caps for the Iceland international team and unfortunately, although he did have a decent career, he never dominated world football like the legend that he was in Championship Manager. When I ran his attributes through the database, the closest I got to him was Adama Traore or Mbappe. I thought we'd go for Mbappe instead just because it's a striker mould. And can you imagine being able to sign an Mbappe level player for only a few hundred thousand pounds from Iceland? I think everyone would do it. And that is why he is forever known as a Championship Manager legend. Another Nigerian player we're looking at is Julius Aga Hoa. Now in Championship Manager 0102, this guy was probably the best all-round forward in the game. And there's even a Facebook group dedicated to him called Fans of Buying Julius Aga Hoa in Championship Manager 0102. So he's definitely made his mark on the world 
maybe in a different way to how he would have wanted to when he first started his football career. But there's a reason why this guy was so iconic. He was lightning quick and could play for pretty much any team in the world. If we look here, at only the age of 19, he's got 20 agility, 18 acceleration. He's just super quick with some nice technical stats too that would eventually develop. And you could also use him in attacking midfield if you needed to. He was an absolute beast, but in real life, he basically just had the pace and everything else was wrong. The best of his career did come on the international stage, winning 32 caps and scoring 14 goals. And unfortunately, while this guy did have a lot of promise, the reason he was so good in game was just to the lack of detail that Championship Manager took into researching him, even having his birthday wrong. But it's players like this that you'd buy in your team, you'd develop your own storylines with them, that made these Championship Manager games what they were, and have led to Football Manager and Championship Manager being things that people still play all like 20 years later now. So credit to him and he did actually go and play seven seasons for Shakhtar in Ukraine, scoring 51 goals in 150 appearances. And he did eventually go on to get a move to the Premier League where he made 20 appearances, never scored, but this guy made his mark in a different way in the footballing world and will forever be remembered as a top level player. Again, I ran the attributes through the database and Mbappe came up again, but we've already used him. So the closest I could find to him was Ousmane Dembele, but it's clear to see that Judo Sagahoa was probably a way better player than Ousmane Dembele ever was, and he's only 19 here. And that, guys, is the last player in the list. So let me know in the comments how many of these you knew, how many of these you remembered. I think if you can get anything more than five or six, one, you're probably fairly old, but two, you're definitely an OG when it comes to championship manager and football manager. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you want to check out my own channel where we've got a Chelsea save going on, then feel free. It would mean the world. But I hope you have a great day and a great new year. And hopefully 2021 is a bit better than 2020. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.